Hi, this is Tim. Um, I thought I'll just make a different kind of video, actually, <laughs> because today I've been quite fascinated by numbers. Uh, not just today, actually, the last at least 10 years, or even since early childhood, I've always liked numbers and, uh, and you know, f try to figure out how they work, because they're kind of, you know, they're kind of everything. They're you know, all the information in the world can be expressed in terms of numbers, uh, even if our computers don't, you know, have the capacity to store all the information in the world. But in theory, all numbers, well, all things, their information can be encoded as numbers. And just to point out a couple of um, interesting ones, uh, I want to talk to you about uh, hash functions or actually more generally about random numbers. <coughs> so if you have a random number um, between 0 and 10, the likelihood of getting one of those numbers is 1 over 10, right? So 0 0.1 which equates to 10%. Anyway, that's probably the, the thing that people accept the most. I actually like to think in terms of small numbers to, to sort of get a grasp on the on the big numbers. But anyway, this is just a random sort of uh, number talk, I guess. Uh, and a good way to explore numbers is actually a little programming language called Python, uh, because it has quite accurate numbers. Um, they can get quite large. Uh, it has some libraries that I actually don't know very well, but uh, that uh, do numbers quite well. Uh, but the standard Python actually has probably the best uh, number handling of things. So a friend of me was telling me today that um, there's a in a deck of cards you can never have uh, the same. Uh, sequence of cards if you deal them out randomly. Uh, and I was trying to think, how can we even be sure of that, right? Uh, how can we how can we know that that is true? Um, so I guess an approach how to do deal with that is is to just make the numbers really small. Like what are the I mean there are two numbers. <laughs> that just have two different states, which is 1 and 2, for example. Or let's just say 0 and 1, uh, but maybe 1 and 2 is more graspable for non-computer people. So you have 1 and 2, right? Um, out of those, let's put them in an array, uh, you have a lot of possibilities already. So I just found a little library here. Um, I'll just take that. Uh, and there's one here for permutations. And we can just pass in an array of numbers. So you can get all the permutations uh, of the numbers 1 and 2. Uh, and I mean, how do you think about this, how many permutations there are? Uh, I mean, there is the possibility of having the combination 1, 2, and then there is the combination of having 2, 1. Uh, and that's basically it, unless you have... Uh, so that's if you have two numbers. So it's choose 2 out of 2. Anyway, I, I forget the mathematics um, behind uh, permutations, to be honest. Uh, but let's just use this um, this tool to, to create them. Um, so it returns an object. Uh, I guess that's how you do it. No? Sorry, this is Python 3 and I've been using 2 and lots of other stuff. Um, so here you have the permutations of, um, of the numbers 1 and 2. Uh, and uh, the fascinating thing is you have 2 here, right, because it's uh, 2 choose 2. So there's only two choices, right? But if you make that 
uh, three numbers, you already get, uh, what is that? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six possibilities. Uh, so what is that? That's, um, as far as I remember, that's uh, the, the factorial, right? So you have the, the, uh, the factorial of the different combinations. Uh, if you choose exactly uh, three out of three, and so on, you always get factorial. So factorial is a function <coughs> that is basically the the product of all its um, uh, possible values. Uh, I'm probably saying this wrong now. But anyway, so you have the, the number of possibilities being uh, the factorial, right? And the factorial is a very simple mathematical functions function. Uh, so if you take factorial of, of 3, for example, you go 1 times 2 times 3. Uh, and if you go factorial of 4, you go 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. Uh, you can see you can omit the 1 there, but it's there because, you know, you could have factorial of 1, of course. Anyway, I'm not talking about the algorithm now. Uh, the, the the interesting bit for me now is the number of different possibilities. So we have, so we have here six possibilities of three different numbers. So we actually we're going up, right? So we had two with two numbers, and now suddenly we have six with three numbers. So we only increase the number of different items by one, but we uh, got. Uh, actually more than exponential growth here because uh, factorial is actually the the most um, the fastest growing function uh, because it increases with every number that you add anyway so if you if you then carry this on and make four in there you suddenly get that many uh, and you can you can count those so um, Let's count them. So that's 24, right? We can we can generate these uh, with a function called range. Uh, so let's say four. Uh, that should give us the same result, yeah. So that basically <coughs> gives you the number of different possibilities with. Um, with uh, with four different numbers, so that's already twenty four. I don't know how high I can take this. Uh, it'll it'll get too big pretty quickly. Uh, see, that's already taking quite a while to to compute. In fact, it might never finish uh, for the end of the universe. It's just twenty different numbers, and it got killed because I just couldn't handle it. Right. Uh, so let's just do that again. Uh, and then print that. So actually, already here with the computer, we, we get to the limits, you know. We, we can't actually do this um, without you know, doing proper mathematics. Um, you know, just letting the computer compute it, it, it. It's too slow to even calculate how many possibilities there are. So it's actually better to do this, you know, with pen and paper <laughs> and, uh, you know, a bit of thinking. So, um, yeah, I guess the point is that you get a lot of different possibilities. I don't know, it might be able to do 10. Yeah, it's that's able to do 10. So with with 10 numbers, you already get, uh, what's that? Uh, 3.6 million different possibilities. Uh, and that's quite a lot. So 32, I won't even be able to, to put 32 in here, but to get back to, um, to the, um, I mean, Look, we've calculated all this junk, right? We don't need that because we know, uh, because of mathematics, that actually um, we can take all that away 
And I'm pretty sure I'm doing this wrong now. Uh, yeah, so import math maybe. It doesn't have factorial. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, of course it has factorial, so it's not fac fact, it's just factorial. So there we go, that's the same result that we had here from counting the number of permutations, but it's, it's much faster. You can do this for 20, you can do this for 30, and if we do 32, you will see that this is quite a huge number. In fact, we can, um, we can count the digits of this number. Uh, by putting it in a string and then calculating the length. So that's 36 digits long. And if you don't think that's long, that's a huge number. Uh, so that's basically 10 to the 36 or more. Uh, it could be more, actually. Uh, but it's at least 10 to the 36. That means a, a, a 1 with 36 zeros. I mean, it might not look that huge here, but that's a huge number of possibilities. That's the number of possibilities you get if you have 32 cards and you lay down exactly 32 cards uh, and do that until you have all the possibilities of laying them down. Then you will have this number. But that actually means uh, that less than 32 cards, sorry, less than 32 cards um, generates almost an equal amount of possibilities. Uh, so, but let's just keep it simple and, and just, you know, say we always lay down 32 cards. So that's, you know, that's a huge amount of possibilities. You couldn't actually, the, the time since the Big Bang, as I just read, uh, was something like uh, 10 to the to the 17 uh, seconds ago, I guess. No, sorry, 10 to the 17 years ago. Um, so that's how you write it in Python. Uh, so if we say the the age of the universe is is 10 to the 17 years, uh, then uh, we can just, you know, that's, um, I think it's 3.7 or something. It doesn't matter. It's on the same order of magnitude. But if you have that many years, how many seconds do we have? So we have, we have 365 days a year, and we have 24 hours in those, and then we have 60 minutes in each hour and then we have 60 uh, seconds in every um, minute. So let's say seconds here. So that's already <laughs> quite a quite a big looking number. Anyway, if you then turn that into milliseconds, that's times a thousand, turn that into uh, microseconds, I believe. One. Sorry, I'm not a physicist. So microseconds and then nanoseconds. So that's, let's say that's the number of nanoseconds we have since the universe was born. So that's yeah, and it doesn't look that big, but look, it actually, uh, where is it? Sorry. Uh, it's actually smaller than this number here, and that's 32 cards. And just by adding, so that's the number, uh, hang on, I'll just do the length calculation on the, on the nanoseconds. So that's 34 and 36, that's pretty close. 
but how many cards can you deal out? You can't deal out cards in in nanoseconds. I mean, to do it even in a second, let's say all the people in the world would simultaneously all the time deal out cards at every moment since human history, they would never get the same uh, card deck because you know, even if they do it once every nanosecond, which would be you know, impossible already, then you wouldn't get the same deck of cards. I guess that's why why cards are a popular game because you have so many possibilities, uh, and you have different games and and so on and so on. Anyway, the point here is what I'm trying to make people understand, and what I've been trying to realize myself uh, is that numbers are so interesting because um, for example uh, a GUID right so a GUID or a universally unique identifier is something like this okay so I mean that doesn't actually look that scary it doesn't look that long but you know just to understand how unique one of these globally unique identifiers is I mean, how do we actually grasp how how unique that is? So um, let's just generate a new one. Let's call it um, just U. Uh, and then let's take the the hyphens out here because they're just added to make it more readable. Uh, and they are always in the same places, so that's just a convention. But let's see how unique this this unique identifier actually is by removing them. So I believe this does that. I haven't tried it, so uh, here's to luck. Uh, so that's wrong. There we go. So that's a simpler method. Um, anyway, that's not important. What is important is we have uh, these characters here. And let's say that is our uh, new you, let's say. Uh, so that's the the characters that determine the um, the number of possibilities. So, um, so in this case, it's not as simple as uh, in the previous case where we had base ten. These these numbers are actually hexadecimal. So that means they gave go from zero to f. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. So that's 16 different possibilities. So instead of, instead of 10, you get 16. So, so let's just convert this number into a base 10 number. And then we can see the order of magnitude. So Google knows everything. I can just do int um, u uh, 16, I believe. Yeah, that turns it into, an, let's say, i, an integer. So now we need to take the length of that, right? Uh, so we just grab this, right? And you will see that that's huge. So, sorry, that'll, uh, yep, do it. Hmm. We get an overflow. So, yeah, that means. No, sorry. I think I did that wrong, actually. I have to do this. Sorry, I stumbled a bit. Uh, so, I think it's. I'm pretty sure that this is right. So we have to get the length of the um, the string that makes up this integer, get the factorial, and then the length of that, which gives us the um, uh, the mag 
sorry, the the magnitude of that number. Uh, oh, sorry. So, oh, oh damn it! Sorry. <laughs> So i is equal to that. So then we take that. So that's 47. Wow. So what did we say? We had seven, uh, 10 to the 17 sec uh, years in the age of the universe. Let me just quickly check that. So here it is. The Google knows everything. So it's 13.82 billion years. So what is that actually? Age is equal to that. So a thousand would be times a thousand, right? So a million would be that times a thousand and a billion would be that times a thousand. So that's how many how many years we've got. Well that's the number of years. Take that times uh, 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. Uh, and that gives us the number of seconds. So th there we go. That's 10 to the 17, as I said at the start. Anyway, uh, getting back to to this theory about why unique identifiers are actually truly unique and why you know numbers are so important uh, especially in computing and actually everything else um, I believe uh, if you want to do anything sort of with science or anything you need to you need to understand a little bit about numbers so just to to get an idea how unique is a unique identifier we have this huge number here, which has the length 47, and this, the number of seconds in the age of the universe, has only 17 digits. This is 47. So even if we, you know, the idea is, if we have seconds uh, times a thousand, that's milliseconds times um, a thousand again that's microseconds times a thousand again so that's the number of nanoseconds you only get up to 26 right because you add three with every thousand you add three digits see these three digits are the ones you add so you only get to 10 to the 26 but here we have 10 to the 47 so even if you had the the universe happening in in the time scale in let's say we would be generating a unique a globally unique identified fire by by random even if we did that um uh 10 to the 47 divided by 10 to the 26 let's just do that so times equals uh, let's just make it easy in 10 to the 47 divided by let's just make this more clearly divided by 10 to the uh, what was it 26 so that's the number of nanoseconds so times is equal to that's still so you could fit generating all the numbers in this range that have exactly that number of of digits even if you put them all into the universe 10 to the 21 times so that's a one with 21 zeros that's a huge number that's even bigger than the 
age of the universe itself in nanoseconds oh sorry sorry not in nanoseconds in uh, milliseconds or microseconds uh hang on microseconds no just just milliseconds but let it be milliseconds i mean you, we can't even imagine those numbers that you know that a millisecond is uh if there or a micro uh, sorry a millisecond is in the age of the universe uh so that should sort of give you an understanding of how unlikely it is to generate another unique identifier that's why they're called unique identifiers and that's why why um why they're so powerful they are huge numbers take little space you know it doesn't take much space to store a number like that but there are so many different possibilities anyway uh, i guess the important thing that i've been thinking about a lot was um was hash functions and um uh hash functions are functions that create a a small number of bits from a l for an any size or bit size chunk uh so you could have for example a number right uh so a very simple hash or probably the simplest hash function uh is just it's just a logical function like and or or um or no uh, probably not is the the simplest possible hash function uh although it's it's actually not a not a hash function it would be the sum of the nots um so sorry that was probably a bit confusing uh but a hash function is basically a function that creates a smaller number of bits from a large number of bits so i guess the the simplest possible hash function you can think of uh is the parity the parity is basically if you have 1 0 1 1 and so on uh you just compute um whether it's uh even or not even no, uh, whether it's even an even number or a not even number of ones in the in the string so here it would be 1 2 3 4 5 that's odd so the parity would be 1 right uh if i added another one here the parity would be even and then we would have a par parity of 0 so that's the simplest possible hash function uh but of course you know you then get only two possibilities of of having a hash so it's not a very not a very secure one in fact it's trivial but that's the the simplest possible hash function anyway hash function gets hash functions get equally powerful as unique identifiers when you make the numbers large enough so um a common hash function is um md5 uh although they reckon that um sha1 is more secure now uh because uh there was a an attack on md5 i don't know uh to be honest i don't actually know exactly how these functions work i just know that that they work uh and they can actually be shown to um to be low collision so a collision is for example if you have the hash function of the parity parity you have 101 uh the that would be equal to um to 0 right not equal but you know the the parity of of 101 would be 0 and uh you could you could then change this to 1 1 0 and the parity would still be 0 so that's what's called a collision um anyway with 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 good hash functions like sh a1 or md5 even you have a very low likelihood of getting a collision in fact the the li likelihood of that happening is 
you know, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's something like the age of the universe in nanoseconds and it wouldn't happen again in that if we were to generate one hash of that thing a nanosecond. Uh, I guess that's true for SHA1. I'm not sure what the attack on on um, uh, on MD5 is, but I think it's something called rainbow tables. Anyway, the the point is that a hash function can be assumed to be secure as long as it's not proven that it's not. Uh, and there are lots of you know arguments why we think that SHA-1 is actually secure. Uh, I don't want to go into detail into why that is, but you can you can see that you can make these functions fairly complicated. They're they're actually really complicated beasts, but the the astounding thing is that they're very fast. They're very with computers you can you can calculate a hash of of a number in or even a file that's huge. You can calculate that within seconds mostly even if with large files uh, you have to go through the whole file uh, to calculate the the hash so you ha uh, it's limited by disk io but you can you know you can of videos uh, i could make a hash of this video uh, i might actually post it in the in the comment um, i could make a hash of this video in in a very little amount of time and um, so that's that's why they're useful and and I guess you could sort of start to understand why something like uh, Bitcoin works. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not really a proponent of Bitcoin or I don't necessarily believe that Bitcoin is the answer to to everything uh, but it's certainly um, an interesting concept because <coughs> the mathematics behind it seems to be fairly um, fairly legit uh, it it relies on the assumption that the hash function uh, that it uses like SHA-1 I think it uses um, in the implementation uh, it assumes that that function is secure and uh, I guess we we have to assume it is because it hasn't been broken in the last I don't know how many years uh, and it, it's basically it's such large numbers that it would take you know the age of the universe to to compute um, a collision which you need if to be able to attack those hash functions anyway so so you have hash functions and they're, they're quite quite interesting really um, uh, to be honest not really interesting in the mechanics of how they exactly work but interesting in the concept that they are useful for security uh, so I mean the, the Bitcoin network relies on that and actually the the Bitcoin is not necessarily the most interesting thing about about that mathematics uh, you know the the more interesting applications are, I don't know, smart contracts or um, or things like that. That uh, maybe what else can you have? There's something called IPFS now. Um, that's uh, yeah. So here we go. The the times the universe fits into a. Uh, at least the time of the universe the times the time of the universe fits into um, a unique identifier uh, which is basically uh, which could be also the result of a hash function is so big that we can't even imagine it so 21 zeros that's what a thousand uh, so seven right so a thousand uh, a million a billion a uh, what is the next one <laughs> trillion and then a quadrillion a quintillion and a sextillion so that's a sextillion 
a sextillionth part of of a unique identifier. So yeah, I guess uh, that's all I have to say right now. Um, I just felt inspired today for some reason to talk about numbers and I thought maybe uh, if it interests one person out there I would be already happy. <laughs> um, most people don't really like numbers or mathematics but maybe maybe through this video I could make you like them a little bit more because I mean that's basically you know all the information in the world is based on numbers um, so that's a pretty pretty powerful construct and I guess you can uniquely or universally uniquely def identify something just by grabbing a random uh, at least if it's quite random um, number like a just a large number I mean even a movie on your hard drive a movie will be just a number it will be a string of ones and zeros it's just one huge as number um, so there are illegal numbers you can you can go to the number file they have lots of stuff about numbers but I thought this might be a slightly different take on 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 some of the numbers that are reality to us uh, the number of seconds in the universe uh, in the time of the universe uh, seems like it would be huge uh, but it's actually you know in the <laughs> grand scheme of things uh, it's actually quite small you know uh, which is amazing you know even if you got on to, to nanoseconds or you know something that is so short that we can't imagine how short it is uh, our thoughts are not even fast enough to keep pace with with a nanosecond so just uh, think about that and the um, the amount of you know capacity our brain has to to even think about these constructs is um, yeah it's quite quite a nice little thought and uh, I hope I can share some of my enthusiasm about uh, numbers and computers and um, I guess the geek factor um, yeah I hope you enjoyed listening to this and uh, I hope uh, to hear from you soon thank you bye